I am Brian Pate from the Pate Realty Group at Keller Williams. Here to talk to you a little bit today about the Wake Forest real estate market. I know that we've got some fellow real estate agents. Uh, I know Rourke is here and uh, Jennifer's here from Remax. We've got some friends from Cole Banker here and then uh, uh, Parlay Properties is here. Glad to see you guys. And then Alan Tate. Uh, I'll tell all of the realtors if you want any of these slides or any of the statistics that I'm about to show, I'll be happy to share them with you. Uh, I think most of you know me and have my email address, so I'm happy to share these with you, but I think it's good for everybody to know what's going on. Today we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to talk about ways for you to save money, ways for you to make more money if you're selling your home, things to look for if you're a buyer. And, uh, but we're going to start with looking at some s statistics because what you'll learn in the real estate business is that numbers don't lie. So we're going to look at some national numbers today. We're going to look, look at some regional numbers for the Triangle area, including Raleigh and Durham. Uh, and then the local area, we're going to get hyper-local and get to some real specifics about the Wake Forest real estate market as we go through today. First thing I want to show you is a population center map of the United States of America. It's very interesting to look at this and see that over half of the populations in the United States, half the population in the United States lives in these darkened areas. So you can see Miami down here, but if you look up here in North Carolina, you see Wake, Durham, and Orange County. It's one of the most heav heavily populated areas in the country. And then over here, you see Charlotte Mecklenburg, and then you get down here to the coast towards Wilmington. So you've got a lot of density and population in the major metropolitan areas here in the Triangle area. So it's always good to understand where people are moving to and where they're moving from. And obviously, we are still a destination. Here in Wake County alone, there are 46 people a day moving to Wake County. So uh, a, a big number still, and the market's still good. Uh, these numbers are from Realtor.com. These are the trends for the first half of 2016. The total number of home sales are up 5% compared to 2015. And uh, the, median the median existing home price has gone up 5% and we are at a new high. And we'll talk about those numbers because the median price in Wake Forest has skyrocketed in the last 24 months. So we're going to talk about that. We had the best spring in a decade. 2006 was the last time we were so busy. And of course, the appreciation that you're getting out of your home has restored equity. Over 95% of homes in the United States now have positive equity. Whereas if you look back five years ago, there were about 30 to 35% of the homes in the US that had negative equity. So they were upside down. They owed more than it was worth. So that's an important number to look at. I want to show you a little trend here so that you can get an idea of what's happening. Uh, this is a, a tracking of the number of MLS listings that are live here, here in the Triangle area. You'll see that we had a huge boon with up to 14,200 uh, uh, listings back in 14. But look what it's done in the last year to year and a half. You've seen a steep drop in the number of listings. For the first time back in the, in the first quarter of 2016, we were under 10,000 active listings in the Triangle, and that's the first time that had happened since the mid-1990s. If, you if you've been here long enough, you remember in 1995, Money Magazine named us the number one place in the country to live, and we saw a huge boon, and that was the last time we saw the number of listings below 10,000. What this is telling us, folks, is that we've got an inventory issue here in the Triangle area. And if you're looking at buying a house right now, you probably realize that if, if you walk through it and you like it, you better write an offer then and there because somebody else is already back at, the, at their realtor's office writing an offer. So that's creating a lot of multiple offer situations. We're seeing a lot of scenarios, especially under 300000 locally, where homes are selling actually above the list price by as much as 5 and 6%. So it is important to understand what the market is doing. As we look at this, this is just the last uh, six months uh, right here. You'll see the dip that we had in the inventory here at the beginning of the year. The first two months, the, the spring market that everybody talks about started in the middle of January this year. And we anticipate that happening again next year. So it's very important to see this drop. And what you see here is when this large drop occurred, this is when prices began to really jump. And we've seen as much as a 5 to 6% increase in home values just in, the, in that three or four month period. So that's very important to understand also. 
This is a stat of the total number of sales in the Triangle MLS. Your blue is 2014, red is 2015, and uh, the green is 2016. I want to bring particular focus to the month of June. That is the most number of homes sold in the Triangle MLS in history. Uh, the Triangle MLS was first organized in the 1970s. Over 4,200 homes sold in the 11 county area just in the month of June alone. And now you're beginning to see some drops in the number of homes sold. One of the downsides of a presidential election year is that every president that is new to the office since 1972 has inherited a recession of some kind. Now, I don't know that we're going to make the, the uh, specific definition of a recession, but we are beginning to already see a little bit of a pullback. Prices have gone down in the last couple of months by about a half to three quarters of a percent on average. And of course that inventory is beginning to climb now. So there are now more homes available. And that's changing the market at this point. This is also another piece that we've been watching closely, the number of days that the houses are on the market before they sell. And you can see here that we're literally at a 50 to 40 day market in the last three months. That is unheard of, folks. Typically, this number is somewhere between 120 and 150 days in a healthy real estate market. It should take you four to five months to sell your home in a normal market. And we haven't been there in a long time, okay? So lots of changes coming from that. And then this is what your average sale price is doing. You can see it's, it's going up exponentially here with the green tabs. And that's where, that's the same thing it did, unfortunately, in 2006. Anybody remember what happened in 2007 and 2008? Now, we do not expect to see as significant of a hit. We're talking maybe 2 to 3% drop in home values, not 20 to 30% like we saw between 2008 and 2010. Uh, and that has been a huge effect. So let's take a look. This is as of last night. There are 456 homes on the market in Wake Forest. That includes the single family homes, that includes uh, mobile homes that are on a brick foundation, it includes condominiums, and it includes townhouses. So there are 456 properties. The average list price in Wake Forest, folks, is $463,000 with a median price of $402. We've got a problem with affordable housing in this area. If you look at the average household income in Wake Forest, it's higher than Wake County's by almost $40,000 a year. We've got a huge population of master's and doctorate degrees around here, but what this is telling us, folks, is if you don't make at least $125,000 a year, you can't afford the median home price in this area. So it's become a very affluent area. The challenge with that is, is workforce is very difficult to build when you don't have housing nearby for them to purchase. And that's why we're seeing a lot of people that work in Raleigh these days, they're going out to Youngsville where they can get a house in the 150s to 175s and it's similar square footage to some of the brand new properties that are coming out of the market. You'll also see that our average days on the market is 88 while the median is 57. This median pro um, day on the market to give you a comparison in 2008 and 2009 the median days on the market was 132 days okay the 132 days it went down to as low as 45 back at the beginning of the the uh, second quarter here in Wake Forest so we're beginning to see that build a little bit and again it's important to know the shift is going on right now. We're already seeing movement in the area with the higher inventory, median sales price dropping, the median list price climbing. Under 300,000 right now is an average time on the market of about eight days. So if you're putting your house on the market under 300, you should be ready to pack the next weekend. Okay? So be aware of that. Uh, the three hundred to four hundred thousand dollar mark is where the most competition is right now. So if your home is between three hundred and four hundred thousand dollars, that's a huge challenge because you're having to be extremely comp competitive, if not aggressive, with your price in order to get it sold. Because if you don't like the offer that the buyer just made, they'll go right down the street to a similar home and make the offer and figure out who's more motivated to sell and who's who needs to get out. 
The big challenge that we as realtors face right now with the three hundred to four hundred thousand dollar range is the magic question of do you want to sell it or do you want a price? Because most of the time we're not getting both of those at the same time. The other one that is really becoming challenging is the five hundred thousand and up marker. I don't know if anybody's driven out by Camp Canada Road in the last six months, but there are three neighborhoods that start in the five hundreds or higher going in out there and when if you've got a five hundred to six hundred thousand dollar house and new construction is being built around you we call it the Homer Simpson effect for the buyers they go ooh shiny and they want the brand new one that they get to pick their carpet they get to pick their colors they get to pick their countertops and everything and in order to compete with it we're seeing the resale properties selling for as much as ten percent below what those new construction houses are 10% in a $600,000 range is $60,000 that people are losing, okay? And we're going to talk about those homes a little bit later when we talk about some of the other challenges that we're facing. Uh, I am not advancing here. Hold on a minute. Here it goes. Greg, can you help me out and hit the space bar, buddy? Is Greg up there? There we go. I got it. I got it. Okay, so the next piece that I want to talk about, I'm going to talk to sellers for a minute, and then I'm going to talk to buyers for a minute, okay? And the information is going to be usable on both sides, so keep, keep your ears, ears open here. The 10 mistakes that seller make, sellers make when selling their home. We're going to talk about all of these. We're going to hit them quickly. If you've got more detailed questions that you'd like to ask, uh, I'm more than happy to stop after the, the session here. We'll have a question and answer portion. And if you'd like to catch me privately, I'm certainly happy to talk to you. But neglecting repairs and maintenance is the biggest drawback right now, folks. If you've got something that you know is wrong with the house, fix it. It's going to do nothing but get worse. You can ask Robert Pettyjohn, if you've got a little bit of mold right now and you don't do anything about it, you're going to have a lot of mold in about six months. Okay? If you've got a leaky roof and it's just dripping and it's not a big deal right now, it's going to be a big deal soon. So go ahead and get those repairs completed. The next piece that we're looking at is not removing odors. The biggest deal killer. I have seen people open the front door, smell a pet odor, close the front door, and not even go inside. And that means it, we're not talking about just pet odors. We're talking about those of you that are Yankee candle collectors that have all sorts of fragrances mixed together. If you do that, the buyer thinks that you're hiding something. So you've got to allow the house to have its own aroma and it should not be offensive. Um, not doing a deep clean. Now this is something that we have a lot of challenges with with some of our clients because they don't want to spend the three or four hundred dollars to do a deep cleaning of the house. And I tell I talk to them about this that if they were selling their car, if you were trying to get top dollar for your car, would you wash it? Would you have the interior vacuumed out? Would you have the windows clean? You're dealing with the single largest investment you've ever made in your life. Why won't you do that for your home? Make sense? So get the deep clean. A good cleaning company will come in with two or three people and they'll do it in three hours where it would take you a couple of days worth of hard back-breaking work to do. It's worth the money. Spend your time focusing on getting the rest of the items in the house going. Greg, I'm having trouble again. I think my battery may be going down here, bud. Um, not disconnecting emotionally. I know this is the house that little Joey took his first steps in. I know this is the house that, that little Billy brought all of his friends over for his birthday party and hid his face in the birthday cake. I get it. But you have to get away from that. Once you've made the decision to sell, the house becomes a commodity. So it'd be, it's all a matter of putting it on the shelf. When people are looking at houses, they're shopping for houses these days the same way that you shop for prescriptions. And if you got the choice of buying Coumadin for $90 for a 30-day supply or Warfarin for a $10 for a month supply, which one do most people buy? They're comparing apples to apples. So your house, if you want to get as much out of it, you've got to treat, as much, treat it as a commodity. Um, the next thing is, is ignoring professional advice. Now, this is a real challenge because everybody's got a friend who knows a realtor. Okay? There are 8,100 realtors that are members of the Triangle MLS, and they all have an opinion. 
If I asked them all their opinion on one item, all 8,100 of them would give me at least 10,000 opinions. Okay? Here's the challenge. When we get to the point where you've got a friend that's a realtor in New York, well, the laws in New York are totally different from the laws in North Carolina. You need to trust your local expert. And if you've got a family member that's an attorney, don't talk to them until after the house is sold. Because they probably don't know what's going on in North Carolina either. And it doesn't do you any good to talk to a divorce attorney about real estate issues. Make sense? So that's, that's a huge challenge that we have. Not depersonalizing the house. This is a photograph of one of my listings when we walked through it. And I said, you have to take all of these photographs down. And they said, why? I said, because you're showing people all of these exotic places that you've been and you're showing them that you, you've got a lot of disposable income and they're going to negotiate down based on that. You don't want them to know what your kids look like. You don't want them to know where you've been on vacation recently. Depersonalize the house. It allows you to get more money for it. You don't want to give them a negotiating advantage. Not showing a room's proper function. Dining rooms that have desks in them that have become studies are a deal killer. Uh, turning a bedroom into an office space. It's okay for living in it, but when it's time to sell, you need to show the room's proper function. So make sure that you're doing that right. The other thing is getting enough natural light in there. There's a, there's a country song called Every Light in the House is On. And that's what you should be humming to yourself as you're getting ready for a showing. The blinds, don't just turn the blinds and open them so light goes in. Get them up in the air so you get plenty of natural light. Uh, every lamp, every ceiling, ceiling fans, by the way, should be on low speed. We don't need hurricane force winds inside the house when the buyer walks in. But a lot of it has to do with the presentation. It's kind of like the difference between going to dinner at McDonald's versus going to dinner at the Angus Barn. There's a reason you're willing to pay more money for one or over the other. And it's not just the food. This is a beautiful kitchen that we went into a couple of months ago. Uh, love the canary yellow. Uh, the only thing that was missing was the, the paisley purple uh, polka dots there. Uh, but not investing in updates in your home. Yes, there is a little bit of a small trend of the old gold and the avocado colored bathroom fixtures coming back in. That doesn't mean you should leave the one that you've had since 1965, okay? They are up, they are still updated pieces, and, and Rebath would be more than happy to come over and give you some nice colored uh, uh, pieces in your bathroom. We've got kitchens that we're seeing like this. You gotta make sure you're updating, folks. Don't just sit on the house for 15 years and think you're gonna get top dollar. Remember, we're trying to get as much money as we can. The last thing that we have trouble with is people wanting to go ahead and list the house, but they'll get their repairs done eventually. The house needs to be ready the day that it goes on the market because more than likely your most number of showings is going to take place in the first 10 days. And if somebody walks in the house and they see it in poor condition, they're not coming back because you told them you've updated some information. Make sense? So we want to make sure that we've got the listing cycle in mind. We, our system is at least to prep the house for 10 days before it actually goes live and, you, and everybody's got their system that works for them. So talk to your realtor and make sure that you're on the same page in terms of how things are going. So now that we've talked about sellers for a little bit, we're going to talk about buyers. This is what mortgage interest rates have done over the last two quarters. Uh, we're down to 3.41% as an average mortgage rate. Now, I want some, there are some of you in here that probably got your first loan in the 70s and the 80s, and the interest rate that you paid back then, you wouldn't take on a credit card these days. Okay? Um, so we got to remember that when you're talking about a 3.41%, uh, buying power is higher today because of low mortgage rates than it was back in the 70s and 80s because of where mortgage, the dollar goes farther. So we're projecting that mortgage rate, as you can see, that mortgage rate's projected to go up significantly over the next two to three years. So you need to be ready for fours, four and a quarter, four and a half. Uh, and if your credit's not very good, you're gonna see that spike very quickly. 3% down loans are back and they're usable. They are FHA loans typically, but this, there's a couple of pieces that you need to be aware of. Number one, you got to talk to your lender and make sure they provide you with one. If you don't have a preferred lender, talk to your agent. They can recommend somebody to do that for you. 
You also have to make sure you plan to live in the home. You cannot get a 3% FHA loan, live in it for a year, and then move out. You are penalized if you do that. Okay, so be aware you have to occupy the home to get that 3% down payment. And then the final piece is you've got to figure out what's your savings timeline. There are some situations where the house may be appreciating faster than you can save the down payment. And you need to be aware of that before you start trying to do so, especially with as quickly as values have jumped over the last little while. So what's the best opportunity for buyers now to jump ship? If you are moving up, and you are selling a home below 300,000 then um, and you're selling under 300 and you're buying 300 to 400,000 as we talked about earlier very little inventory in the sub 300 market lots of inventory in the 300 to 400,000 range so you can sell your house for top dollar below 300 and you can negotiate very well the list price to sale price ratio in the 300 to 400,000 dollar mark is about 96 percent right now where the, the lower ends of the market are 99 and a half percent which means for every hundred thousand dollars you're getting about four thousand dollars off so on a $400,000 house, you're saving $16,000. That's about $120 a month in your mortgage payment that you're saving. Now you do need to have good credit. We define good credit as 680 or better. You can get a loan with 580 credit today. You can get a loan with 580 credit. I am not challenging you to get to 580 if you've if you're got good credit. I'm just telling you that if, if you're questioning whether you can buy or not, you can buy even with a 580 credit score. I do want to talk a little bit about baby boomers and millennials because we've got a lot of changes that are coming with both of them and I want to talk a little bit about it. What we're seeing right now is we're seeing a lot of baby boomers that are beginning to turn 70 this year. This is the first year that that's happened. And they have large square footage, the McMansion era, they have the large yard and they're typically more isolated. You see a lot of, saw a lot of people that were baby boomers wanted to be, they, they wanted their space. If you watch the Big Bang Theory with Sheldon Cooper, this is their spot, okay? They want to have their own area. But the millennials, there, there are 74.6 million uh, baby boomers and we're going to replace them with 80 million millennials. Now, you can say what you want about millennials. They're doing a couple of things. Number one, they're not getting married until they're in their early to mid 30s these days and they're not having children until their late 30s in many cases okay so they don't need that McMansion to live in as a result 37 percent of first-time home buyers last year were single led by single females okay so you're seeing a lot of that going on but what they're looking for is they want less square footage. They don't want to spend three to four hours a week cleaning the house. They're moving into these high density areas so when they get home from work, they can scrub off a countertop and take a walk with the dog or the kid and go around to the dog park that's in the neighborhood or the, the pool that's in the neighborhood and things like that. But they're moving into 1,800 to 2,200 square feet, where a lot of what we're seeing with, with the baby boomers, they're in houses that are 3,500 to 4,000 square feet, and even larger in some cases. So it doesn't, it, the, those puzzle pieces don't fit together. What does that mean? It could potentially mean huge losses with the values of the homes, because the baby boomers are not paying 500 and up for a home these days. They're going to stay underneath 350 to 400,000 for the most part, and that's why you see so many new constructions starting in that price range. The other thing that's really big is the greenways, uh, because you're, they're riding bikes, they're exercising, they're the Katy Petty John type of people that like to go out and and work in this heat and exercise. Um, we do have something that can help you if you're interested in buying. Uh, it's a mobile app that uh, we can we can send it to you if you'd like. Uh, it allows you to hit a button that says nearby homes for sale. So if you're driving around in a community, you want to know what that house across the street is worth and how much it's listed for, how many bedrooms, and see photos. You hit a button that says nearby homes for sale, and it's got a GPS application on it that allows it to pull up all the information. It ties directly into the Triangle MLS. You see all of the same information that a realtor will see except for who the listing agent is. Make sense? So you've got calculators on there where you can find out what your mortgage would be with the, what the down payment is. It allows you to make a lot of adjustments. Okay? 
So that's the end of the formal part of it. Uh, I will invite you to, if you're on Facebook, you can see us on Be Paid Realty, and you, we will post uh, statistics like you've seen today. We do that every morning. We talk about how many homes are on the market, what the average list price and sale price is, so you can actually see the trend happening. If you want to follow me specifically on Twitter, that's mine. Uh, and then the team Twitter is there. And then on Instagram, we post a lot of pictures when we're looking at houses and showing buyers and things like that. So we're happy to uh, help you with that. Are there any questions? Anyone? Bueller? Anyone? All right. Well, hope you've had a great day. Thanks to all the vendors for letting us uh, drag you away from them a little bit. And hope you've had a good time. And we'll see you again tomorrow. Thanks.